Welcome back to Module Group, Mike here. Today we're gonna discuss the differences between experimental aircraft and certified aircraft. The simplest way to look at an experimental airplane is it's an aircraft you build yourself. A certified airplane is an aircraft that is built by a bunch of professionals at a factory and it's gone through several many 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 hours of safety flight testing and oftentimes you have limitations with a certified airplane as compared to an experimental airplane again remember you're building an experimental yourself which means it's a free for all you can put just about anything you want and hopefully you're not compromising your safety while you're doing it. But let's get into this. We're gonna cover several different things in this comparison video. First, we'll talk about the costs. We'll talk about innovation, which is very important. We'll talk about the features you get in either categories and your time to fly. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about safety, which really is the forefront of anything in aviation. So generally speaking, a certified airplane will cost you on average three to four times more as you would pay for an experimental airplane. And there's a reason for that, which we'll talk about later. But let's take some examples. A Cirrus SR-22, this is a certified airplane, the cream of the crop. A brand new Cirrus SR-22 will cost you anywhere from $800,000 to a million dollars. If you wanted to find a similar airplane, and by similar, I mean same or better performance and capabilities in the experimental category, take an RV-10, for example, you can get just about good in speed and climb and range in an RV-10 as you would in an SR-22. And guess what? You would build an RV-10 for about a quarter of what it costs to buy a brand new Cirrus SR-22. Now, why does it cost so much? Well, just about everything in aviation costs a lot of money, but there's a reason, a big reason why a certified airplane costs a lot more than an experimental airplane. Take safety, for example. Generally, when an aircraft is going through a process of being certified, you're spending so much money in paperwork, you're spending money in certificates, you're spending money in test flights. Unlike an experimental airplane, a certified airplane goes through several, several hours of test flight. And by several, I mean hundreds to thousands of hours of testing different components. And unlike an experimental airplane where you can literally cut into your airplane, change and modify things as you want, in a certified airplane, if you just as much as put a scratch or put a dent on the airframe of that airplane, you need to pay for that. Meaning you'd have, it's like having a whole new design if you were to change anything, any little thing in the certification process is gonna cost you money or set you back. And this is one of the reasons why certified airplanes cost a lot more for the end consumer than an experimental airplane. Now let's talk about innovation. The truth is, all the innovation that happens in civil aviation happens in the experimental world. When you think about all the new technology and innovation happening in civil aviation today, it really is people who are tinkering with stuff, coming up with new ideas and coming up with new ways to fly safe and to help us become better pilots. Now, this is not to say that there aren't any innovations happening in the certified world. The truth of the matter is there are. It's just really, really slow. And it's slow because it is expensive. Any new product, any new design, you wanna get certified, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. That's why you have a lot of manufacturers of certified airplanes just kinda of use the same old stuff. When you think of all the engines in civil aviation, in single engine aircraft, they're old. The technology in these things are so old. They're older than my parents. Look at a Cessna 172. That airframe has been the same for the last 20, 30, 50 years. It's older than I am. And the reason why Cessna keeps it that way, one, it's been flown and proven. And I'm sure Cessna, Moonies, and Pipers, they want to bring new designs into the market, 
but because it's gonna cost a lot more money for them to do so, they keep the old stuff. And this is why innovation is very slow in the certified world as compared to the experimental world. Now let's talk about the features you can get in either category. When you're building out an airplane, you can put just about everything you want for your own comfort or for your own safety in that airplane without any bending of the rules. Also, the cost to put any of those features in your airplane, it's gonna be significantly less compared to the certified airplane. Chances are when you're buying a certified aircraft, you have limitations. You can't go ahead and change anything that you just want to change. You can change maybe your avionics, you can upgrade them if you need to, you can upgrade your interior space if you need to, but the airframe, the engine, the landing gears, all those things are generally fixed. You cannot change them. You're limited to a specific type of engine, a specific type of airframe. You cannot go ahead and just change anything that you want. Now, if you do decide to change as much as you want, then that airplane will be rendered an experimental aircraft rather than a certified airplane. And that can affect the resale value of the aircraft. Some of the cool features you can put in an experimental airplane, parachutes. A lot of light sport aircraft now have parachutes either as an option or you get them standard. For a certified airplane, not so fast. You do have manufacturers like Cirrus who have parachutes standard in all of their airplane models. But everybody else, this is not a feature you can get. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of pilots you talk to don't even want one because when you have a parachute on board, you're taken away from the useful load of the airplane. Other features include lower cost avionics. In the certified world, to change any of your avionics, you're looking at thousands of dollars. Sometimes you're spending more on your avionics than you paid for the airplane. But you move over to the experimental world and you have so many different options you can choose from that are affordable. You don't have to spend $10,000 to get a modern avionics. You can spend $300, $400, $1,000, $2,000 and you have a great device that is just as capable to get you all the data and information on your screen or on an iPad. So again, when it comes to having more features in your airplane, you have a better chance with an experimental aircraft. Now, how long would it take you to fly? A certified airplane is just like a car. You can go pay for your airplane and you can fly it home the same day. With an experimental airplane, you're not flying an airplane because one doesn't exist. For an airplane to be built, you need to get a kit, you need to pay for your tools, you need to commit the time to build out the airplane or pay for a build assist or quick build kit. So there are different several steps when you're thinking of building an experimental airplane. It's not just easy cut as you would with a certified airplane where you're just paying one person and you're picking up the plane. So when it comes to the time to fly, you're better off just getting a certified airplane because you're gonna be waiting in some cases years before you can fly your experimental airplane. Also, flying a certified airplane comes with the safety perks, which we'll discuss now. When it comes to safety, this is one of the big reasons why pilots choose to buy a certified airplane. Again, as I stated earlier, when you're buying an experimental as compared to a certified airplane, that kit has not gone through all the several different process and testing by professionals. Basically, you're your own test pilot if you're building your own airplane. Whereas with a certified airplane, it's gone through several and thousands of hours worth of testing in different environments and passed a bunch of certification before they can release it to the market and sell it to you. So this is one of the biggest aspects of choosing an experimental or a certified airplane. And statistically, experimental airplanes tend to have more crashes and more accident rates. Now, again, this is due to the fact that it's really a one man building the airplane. 
There are many, many experimental airplanes out there that are built by professionals or built at a factory that are flying safe every single day. So do not let that deter you from considering an experimental airplane. So when it comes to safety, we're gonna give that one to the certified airplane. Again, because the manufacturer has paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to make sure it's safe enough before they can sell it to you. And this is all I have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you were informed by this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. I'm sure there's a lot more we can cover and talk about in a comparison like this. As a matter of fact, I want you to leave your comparisons in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, my name is Mike. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button for me and hit that notification button so you get updates whenever I upload a new video. Thanks guys and I hope to catch you on the next video.